In this lecture, we are going to talk about RNN, which is one of the most interesting neural net architectures. In our previous lectures, we talked about deep neural network. So we do have uh, layers of network, and for given input, we pass forwards towards to get our output, desired output or predictions. So CNN is slightly different. So CNN, for a given input, instead of using all of them together, it's just focusing on a certain areas so that it automatically extracts the features and then move on to the next layers. So it's especially very, very effective for image inputs. The RNN is called the recurrent neural net, is very special. Of course, it gets an X as an input and produces output. But at the same time, there is another output, sometimes called hidden state or state, will be passed through to the next cell. Let's try to look at in this uh, unfolded view. So that means that each one has input x1, x2, series of the inputs, and they can produce a series of outputs. And then one very interesting thing here is that for this, the first cell, the output will be passed through the next cell's input. In this cell, then the input of this network is previous status, and uh, this input, and it will produce the output. And for any given cell, for example, we are looking at uh, this cell, then the input here is, of course, some sort of X input here, but also we get some previous hidden states as an input, and then can produce output. Because of this, we can sort of memorize all previous uh, status. We can use this one to produce the next half. Why this is useful? So because a lot of data, what we have is the series of uh, data or time series. So anything that we have a time series, like uh, predicting uh, the, the stock prices, that can be very useful um, for uh, this RNN. Or RNN is very useful for that kind of data. Or language modeling. So if you think about the languages, then we have to understand what I said in the previously so that understand exactly what I'm, what I'm saying. So it, if you just understand the current uh, text or current pronunciation itself, it doesn't mean uh, much. So RNN is very useful for language modeling. And then uh, similarly, uh, anything like uh, dealing with the text, text sentiment analysis, or named, uh, name entity recognition, or translation, or speech recognition, and so on. So we can just uh, combine RNN for uh, different uh, ways. So we can have many, many different models. So for example, here we can just uh, feed one input and then this RNN can produce multiple outputs. For example, we provide the one image here and then we ask uh, this network to captioning uh, this image. So each output here is a word so that we can understand what is this image. And then also we can make our RNN to many to one model. So here we can uh, probably uh, fit a lot of uh, words like a sentence and then can predict a sentiment of the sentence. So it's, it's going to be one output, it's a sad or happy or not happy and so on. Also we can compose this RNN for many to many output. So often this one is used as a, a translation like we provide one sequence Korean language and then can translate another sequence to English, for example. So it's a very common types of RNN models. So we have uh, many topics to cover for RNN. Uh, we basically cover basics, and uh, we're going to teach this RNN to a very simple uh, like uh, language model, or hello, uh, teach uh, to say hello. And then also, we are going to use the RNN for the classification. And then we're going to do uh, more uh, language modeling. And then eventually we're gonna uh, do uh, sequence to sequence. So we're gonna do one by one in our lectures. Before we just uh, using uh, this RNN, let's try to look at inside a little bit. So usually we use this diagram to express RNN. It's uh, from uh, this very famous blog. And then the inside is extremely uh, simple. So basically we get one X input and then eventually we produce output. And then in order to uh, get this output, what we do is that we do uh, get the status, hidden status from previous cell, and then we do concatenate, 
And then uh, we do some uh, matrix multiplications. We uh, go through the 10H. And then uh, we can split this output, one pro output, and another output for the uh, next cell. So this is a very typical, very simple RNN. But however, in order to use this uh, RNN in PyTorch, we don't need to understand everything internally. So we just can use, we can just use this uh, NN, that RNN. And the only thing we need to provide is that what is the input size and uh, what is the output size. Here, we usually call uh, output as a hidden size. And then how we're going to order our data. So this is defined by uh, this option called batch first. In this case, we want to put the batch first in our input. Not only we can use RNN, but we can use GRU or other uh, very famous RNN called LSTM. So everything is same, only we need to change these names and then we can use all these uh, different types of RNN implementations. So for example, let's try to use this uh, RNN and then input size is here is 4 and output size or hidden size is uh, 2. Which means that in each input we have the vector size 4 and then the output will be uh, uh, two values, vector size 2. And then we can make some inputs in here and then because this RNN requires some uh, hidden input as uh, in initially, so we're going to provide uh, initial hidden and then we're going to feed that uh, to here, input to here and hidden here. So cell is going to be our RNN and then the hidden here will this, once we execute this cell, will produce one output, in this case in here, and then this is our output, and then we're going to also provide this hidden. So this, this hidden is going to be used for the next cell, so, so that this hidden is going to be used as a, once we call one more here, for example, then we have another input, and then hidden is going to be used here. So this is a, a typical idea that we are using RNN, so that this hidden will be used, so passed along to the next cells. Now for a real example, we want to feed a, a real letters like H, E, L, L, O to RNN. So we need to feed these uh, letters as an input. But how are we going to feed that? So one of the ways, one of the uh, very simple ways to handle this each letter is we turn this one to a uh, one half. So the first idea is that we're going to collect all of them and then we give them some ID, right? This one is zero, this one is one, this one is uh, two, and this is same, so uh, unique ID, and this is three. And then we turn each one as one half. For example, here, H is zero, right? So this is zero, one half, so it means that one, zero, zero, zero. E is going to be one, so it's going to be zero, one, zero, zero. So we can just define each letter as this uh, sort of the one hat, and then we are using them. So instead of uh, uh, feeding just uh, uh, some value here, we feed uh, this one hat as an input. So in this case, our dimension input is four, which means that we're gonna uh, feed four uh, values in one vector, and then we're gonna feed them. So this is how we're gonna do. And then we expect that the output from this cell is uh, 2 because uh, we defined our hidden size, output size as 2. So what we're going to do is that we get uh, uh, 2 values uh, from this cell. So that's uh, a basic concept or basic way to using this uh, RNN cells. So let's look at the code here. So first of all, we're going to make a cell using this uh, RNN. So we just need to define what is the info size, what is the output size. And then we're going to make this input. So here we define our h as this uh, one hat uh, vector. So we just uh, feed this h. This is a variable h. And then we wrap with uh, some uh, vectors. So that what we want to do is that we want to make rank with uh, 1, 1, 4. So the most important thing is here. So the input size is 4. So this h has uh, 4 vectors. It's a one hat. So we made uh, this uh, input. And then we're going to uh, provide a uh, hidden. So initially, we need to provide this hidden uh, input. So this uh, is, uh, we're going to follow in, in this 
this way so we're gonna the hidden size is the number of layers and number of directions and the patch size and then uh, hidden size this is output size so in our case we have we're going to use only one layer and one direction so it's gonna be one also in this example we are going to use only one patch is one so it's gonna be only one patch and the hidden size this is output size is two so we make this one because it's initial we just make it as a random value and then we just fill them so we're gonna call now this cell for this input we created one and then this initial hidden then we fill that and then it will create uh, output and then hidden so hidden if you're gonna call this cell again we're gonna use this hidden value so they will be connected to the next cells so as we expect we print out this uh, data we got we get just two value which has uh, the hidden size too right so that's why we get the two various vectors and then what we want to do is that uh, this is uh, very easy to understand this is uh, exactly show us how this RNN cell works but often we don't want to feed one character uh, by one character this is too uh, slow and not very efficient so what we want to do is that we want to feed uh, multiple letters at the same time so this one in RNN we call the sequence so previously our sequence size was one but now what we want to do is that instead of feeding only one letter we're gonna feed H E L L O for example so it's a five letters so in this case we call sequence size is five then how are we gonna feed this uh, sequence size five so uh, we don't have to change anything only thing we need to change is that our input shape so previously it was just a one one four because the, our patch is one our sequence was one only the size of the letter the one half vector was four but now what we want to do is we want to change to the here is the sequence so we're gonna uh, prepare our data sets something like this and then we just feed to our cell and that's uh, basically it let's look at the source code we do have uh, this RNN cell like previous like input size is 4 hidden size is 2 so only different thing is here we just uh, uh, put a lot more data so here not only one letter we just uh, put multiple letters sequence 5 actually uh, variables so the shape of this is gonna be one five and four and then we we are going to just uh, create uh, this hidden which is the same as before and then we pass through this cell and then output we just print out and then we expect that output is gonna be one the sequence size and then two is the upper size so as we expected we can just uh, pass through the cell so only different thing is that we just make different types of different shape of inputs and this RNN can handle this beautifully and lastly we don't want to handle only one letters at a time or one one words at a time so we want to feed multiple words for example here we want to uh, pass hello uh, lo or lleel -L. so we want to provide multiple so in this case we call this one as a batch so once again we don't have to change anything only thing we want to change is that the info shape so previously it was uh, a one but now we make is three rank of three right means we're gonna have three patches so how are we gonna do this in the source code so it's very similar to previous so we're gonna make uh, three uh, patches like this and then we're gonna fill them and then just to pay attention on this rank so three is our patch and then five is this is our patch and this is our sequence this is one half size right. so we're gonna put this patch first that's why we are going to use this option called the patch first true and then uh, we are going to use this input and then hidden only different thing is that we're gonna use the, this patch as three so we're gonna change this one as three uh, patches and then we are going to uh, call the cell exactly like a before and then what we are expecting is that exactly like this three batch size and then five the sequence size uh, and then this is our hidden output so this is what we're gonna get so now what we want to do is that now we understand how each cell or how we're gonna 
pass through our data to the RNN cells. So what we want to do here is that we want to really uh, train our model to do something meaningful. So in this example, it's extremely simple, but what we want to teach is that try to say, I, hi, hello. So idea is that in this RNN cell, we feed one letter and then can this RNN predict next, what's the next letter I. And then we're gonna give them I, and then we will predict what's the next letter uh, for that, which, which is H. So uh, basically it will predict, for given letter, it will predict what will be the next letter. So then how we gonna design our um, RNN? So basically the input size, so in, in our case, because we have more vocabularies, H, I, E, L, O. So it's five unique letters. If you compose them, make them as one half, it's gonna be uh, five, right? So the size of the input is gonna be five, while with the output. So alpha size is also five, because what we can wanna predict is that we want to predict one of uh, letters in the five, right? So it's gonna be a multi-class classification. So it's a, a out of five. So our food dimension is also five. So this is our network. And then how are we gonna design our loss function? So we have to design our loss function so that we can do fake propagation and then we, we train our uh, network. So simply, if you have uh, uh, input dimension five and then output dimension five, we will generate some outputs, right? Then this is our label. This is our Y value or it's correct ones. This is our Y prediction. And then we want to the measure the differences. So it's kind of called the loss. In this case, obviously, because it's multi-class classification, so multi-level classification, so we're going to just use cross entropy. So uh, in not only this one, so it's uh, so each uh, each letter we apply this loss, and then we gonna sum this loss, and then we try to minimize this loss. So let's get into the source code. So first of all, we want to make a um, index for the unique letters, which is H I E L O. So each one is corresponding to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we want to express this uh, X data, which is H I H E L L, using this index, which is 0, 1, 0, 2, 3, 3. And then we're going to express this one as one hat. So we can just uh, make this one hat. And the Y data, this is our label. We th this is what we want to predict. So it's, this is right value, it's I, H, E, L, L, O. So for given H, it will predict I. For given I, it will predict H, and so on. So we express this one using this ID. So zero, uh, one is I, and H is zero, and so on. And then using this variable, we just make uh, this input and then we also make these labels. For a better way to make this one hat lookup is that uh, we just make this a sort of lookup table, and then we are using this Python expression. We go this x data, we first we define our x data, and then we get one x near, and then we look up this uh, one hat lookup table, and then we can compose this one hat. This is a little bit more elegant way to get the one hat uh, factors. And then of course the uh, the rest is the same, and then we need to define some parameters. The number of classes five, and the input size is also five. Hidden, which is alpha size is five. Batch we're gonna do only one, and then sequence length one, number of layer one. So it's kind of easier to define all the parameters in one place, and then we can change these parameters if it's necessary. Our model we can just use um, PyTorch way, so we can make a class here. We let's uh, look at this initialization function first. So only one thing we want to do is that we want to create this RNN for a given input size and hidden size and so on. So we just create one uh, neural net RNN cell, and then uh, in the forward, basically it gets an X and as an input. Also, we get a hidden and second input, and then we're gonna just uh, uh, feed this one to here, right? So that's a basic idea. But before we do that, we make sure that our X is in this shape, like batch size, uh, sequence length, and input size. Just to make sure that X is in the, in the right shape, and then we're gonna pass this X to here. 
So it is uh, given. And then output. So once we have outputs from R and N, we need to uh, compute the loss. Right? So here we have to think about how we're going to design, what is the really size of rank of the output, what is the shape of the output. We have to design that. So just let's think about we're gonna what we're gonna do is that we're gonna predict one of five um, values, right? So here output is gonna be we don't know how many um, letters or how many uh, sequences, but this is gonna be n. But eventually, what we want to predict is they predict one of five. So the y output is gonna be uh, this n by five. Uh, matrix, right? So make sure, in order to make sure this output is in this, we are going to use this reshape commands like uh, 5, which means that uh, we want to make this one n, everything, and then the last uh, vector size is 5. So that's uh, how we're going to sort of make this output in order to compute this uh, loss uh, efficiently. So this is how we're going to make sure that this output is in this shape. And then using this output, we can just uh, compute uh, the loss. And then loss, we are just going to use this cross entropy uh, loss, uh, like uh, previous uh, lectures. So um, then that's sort of the basic. Then what we want to do is that we want to feed this letter one by one, the manner, so that uh, we can uh, get output and then we can compute the loss and so on. So in when we're doing this, we're going to pass this uh, hidden status from previous cells so that we can uh, get this hidden states for all previous ones. So how are we going to do this? So we can just simply implement using one uh, simple for loop. So initially, we're going to start with the uh, uh, loss is going to be 0. So we got get the initial hidden from uh, this model. And then we, got, we are going to learn a uh, for loop. From the inputs, we're going to get one letter. And then labels, we got to get one label. And then we going to call model, which is forward. And then we pass this input, and then this hidden. And they will generate the outputs and uh, hidden, right? And then uh, this output will be used with uh, with the label. We can use this one to compute the loss. And loss will be accumulated. And then this hidden, in next loop, this hidden is going to be used as input for the next cell next uh, model so that it's going to be used on here right so it's going to be um, used for next hidden next to cell and then uh, eventually once we complete this loss we just do the backward and then we can do uh, train this model so this is one by one so uh, this is, is our entire one and then in each iteration or each uh, training what we want to is that we can predict uh, what actually the model predicts, right? This is output includes our uh, prediction. So we can try to print out this output and see how our model works. As you can expect, when it starts from beginning, the loss function is a little bit high and then our prediction is oh, looks like random. But as time goes on, it can predict less letters correctly. So this is good. But one problem of uh, this is that we don't want to really run roof. Uh, for each letter. So can you just feed everything together like uh, we just feed like uh, previous ones? So um, it's easy. Basically, uh, we can just create a model as before, but instead of feeding the one letter and going to loop, we can just feed the entire inputs, right? So this is exactly how we did in the previous example. So we don't have to change anything, only change this uh, input, and then we feed the label, and then this can uh, get the uh, loss. So here we run this model with all inputs and then also the initial hidden here and then we can create outputs from this output and then we are using these labels so you can get the loss. So it's exactly the same for instead of going loop we just feed the uh, entire input at once in here and then we can just compute this loss function. Alright so that's uh, about it and then uh, for the exercise what we can do is that because we now know how to implement a multi uh, softmax classifier. So we just try to implement this predicting next letter for a given one letter. We want to predict next letter just using a softmax classifier. Can you do that? This is our exercise. So maybe you can try and you can figure out that why it doesn't really work very well. So one of the reasons is that uh, each softmax, they don't really see the previous status. So it doesn't have any previous status. So for only given states, predicting next is a little bit difficult. 
And for the next exercise, what we can do is uh, we can combine this our uh, RNN and then uh, our the softmax classifier. So uh, this is a very typical model. So we are using RNN, but on top of this RNN, we're going to add another uh, fully connected layers. So this is very typical. And then if you try this one, it will train a little bit faster. And then you can think about why uh, this is uh, faster and more stable. In our example, we are just used the one hot uh, encoding, which is uh, kind of very simple. But I think uh, there is another way, or sometimes it's a much better way, is that using embedding idea. So it's exactly the same as uh, one hot, but one hot is it's kind of pretty fixed, right? But embedding, so for example, here we just provide some index, it will give us some numbers. But these numbers are often trainable numbers. So this trainable number can help to uh, make uh, our model better. So using this one is extremely simple. So we can just create uh, embeddings for a given vocabulary size, and then what will be the upper size, right? So we can just define that, and then we just feed uh, this x input, and then it will create embeddings. So here, for example, here we can create embeddings. Here is our vocabulary size, what's the embedding size? Using it, it's extremely simple. And then we can do this one as uh, uh, another example, in another exercise using embeddings. You can implement exactly the same thing, RNN with a fully connected layer, but you can use this embedding rather than one hard encoding. All right, so uh, lastly, we can probably look at a little bit uh, internally what's the, how RNN really works. So we express the RNN something like this X and as input, we have another input. Uh, previous hidden states, and then uh, using this, we can create hidden and then eventually output, right? So we can express this one as uh, some sort of equation here. So the idea, this vanilla RNN or a simple RNN uh, is uh, very simple. So for given x, so we have a weight, u weight, and then for previous hidden states, we have a w matrix, which is plus, then, and then uh, we have a bias, we added a, a bias value. So here, these values are trainable values. And then from here, this is A, and then our hidden will be just a 10H on this A, and then output will be used another variable, this is also trainable, this H, VH plus another sort of bias value here, C, and then this is our output. So this is uh, basically our uh, RNN. And then this uh, Y output, once again, we're gonna just put the softmax on this output. So this is how RNN works. So LSTM is a little bit complicated, but just basically, simply, uh, we have uh, more connections. We can just take a look at this block, and then GRU is another yet another RNN. But you can uh, also see these equations to understand how uh, they are connected to each other. As exercise, if you want to fully understand how they are working, you can just implement that. So idea here is that you can make your own class, and then here uh, you can define what is the hidden. Here, this is hidden, right? So you can define hidden, and you can define output using all these equations. So once you try to implement that, you can understand a little bit better. And then you can also try to implement this GRU. So we just finished the first RNN, but we have more to talk about.